Welcome back to the Rheumatoid Solutions Podcast. And I'm smiling from ear to ear because my guest today is a happy, vibrant entrepreneur, uh, CEO of multiple companies with a story to share. We're going to talk about how he was able to recover from crippling uh, rheumatoid arthritis and manage to hold down all of these corporate responsibilities at the same time. And how is that possible? And how did he get better? And was his business impacted? Well, to answer those questions and teach us what we can do if we're trying to balance work life and a chronic health condition, I've got Max with me. G'day, Max. Thank you so much, Clint. It's really, really great to be here. I'm a huge fan of yours. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for everything you've done and helping, helping everyone and helping myself get to the place that I'm at. It's really, really special what you're doing. And uh, I really, really appreciate it. So thank you. That's really, really kind, Max. And I, in return, want to thank you because the way that we connected here was that you wrote I guess, uh, like a, a, a blog post or a story about your transformation. And you put it on one of your websites. And then you sent me the link and said, hey, Clint, check this out. And I'm like, what's this about? And I'm reading, I'm reading, reading. I'm like, this is fascinating. And it's such a warm and positive story. And then I, in turn, invited you to come and share it to, uh, yeah. you know, to our community. So why don't we start um, before we get a sort of before and after of your transformation with your health uh, set the scene for us with your corporate um, sort of responsibilities in your business. Yeah, so I'm the CEO of Human Media, and our slogan is humans helping humans live better. So what a perfect place to be here sharing this, this story with all of your viewers and your followers. Um, and uh, we are a wellness media company. We're based in Halifax, Nova Scotia. We've been around for 15 years, and we have four platforms. Uh, one is called optimize.com, which is a women's wellness platform. We also have silvermagazine.ca, which is a wellness platform platform for older Canadians. And then you'll be happy to know that we also have a food, plant-based food website called healthfulgourmet.com, which are all plant-based food recipes that are have a little bit of a gourmet panache and flair added to the recipes. And then we also have a home workout. Uh, channel, which is called homeworkin.ca. So we've got four platforms and uh, we're a wellness media company in Canada and in North America. And we have quite a bit of a reach across Canada, especially. Uh, we rank number one in Google search for some of our sites. And we work with a lot of our clients to help build their brand awareness and increase their profile. And yeah, it's a wonderful company. I've got a great team, a great staff that I love working with and they're all very innovative and <clears throat> we've actually had to make a major pivot uh, just during the pandemic moving away from print because we used to do a lot of print and with the paper prices being as they are and with uh, the global supply shortage of paper uh, we've been moving away from print and been really focusing on the digital side of things and that's been going very well so yeah. Well, congratulations. And how long have you been in this digital media space? Well, that's a great question. We actually launched as a website first. So we've always been a digital media company, but we um, we launched in 2007. And then we started uh, doing print magazines probably about eight months after that. And that went very successfully. And we went national and we had a lot of partners and we still have a lot of good partners. And uh, and then we sort of transitioned away from the print, like I said, just during the, the pandemic with everything going on with, with the whole uh, paper industry being so much in uh, you know, disorder with everything. So we were really focusing on the digital side of things. Yeah. Okay. Well, perhaps offline, we can talk about how, you know, we might be able to do some things together, perhaps more than, uh, more than. Uh, yeah, I would love that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've got lots of questions about that, but our audience are going to be interested in your health and, and, and what you did, because in each one of these interviews, uh, there's always at least one, often many of these nuggets of insights. Wow, that's what can be done, or that's how you do it, or that's the mindset, or wow, I didn't know that's how the gut reacts to. So I'm hoping we can get uh, some nuggets from you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so 
uh, uh, well, before we go into your deep story, just do a sort of I was there and now I'm here kind of sort of snippet. Yeah, sure. I appreciate that. Yeah, so I was in a place that um, was very hard to see where I was going. I knew I was going in a direction. I knew I was on the path to wellness, but uh, I really couldn't find the right uh, place that I wanted to be. And um, I basically started out when I was like 35 when I th- I think you read in my story that I that I sent you the blog. Uh, I went running one day and uh, my foot really started acting up and I was in a lot of pain. And it just started getting worse from there, Clint. And really, I went to the doctors. They couldn't figure out what was going on. And I had a hard time even walking. Um, and uh, I was fairly athletic and I was having a hard time uh, doing some of the sports that I enjoyed. And uh, it was really... Uh, a scary place to be, very scary. And but now uh, I'm living in a pain free life. I don't take any meds whatsoever. Uh, I feel great. I've got more energy. I've lost a lot of weight. Uh, my my waist is down to 32, which is basically what I had in high school. And uh, you know, I, I'm just uh, feeling like a million bucks. The energy is obvious, you know, even before we hit record here, we're sort of riffing off each other and bouncing bouncing our uh, experiences about, you know, uh, Canada and wildlife and all sorts of fun stuff. And it was almost like we could chat all day before we actually hit record here. Um, so that is really clear. Um, uh, tell us about the, the, the sort of the, uh, the, you know, the 35 you mentioned when it started. Um, uh, how much time passed before you actually did something about that? And what things did you try that didn't work? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, so so it started with my foot uh, being really sore. And so I went to the doctor. He immediately injected cortisone into my feet. And um, so that helped for like maybe a week. And then it started coming back. And I was like, what's going on here? And I went back to him. He's like, oh, I can give you another injection. I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's it. So he's like, uh, well, why don't you go and, uh, uh, you know, let's let's get some blood work done and and see, you know, maybe there's something underlying causing it. And I was really happy to find out that I had no arthritis whatsoever, no rheumatoid arthritis. And I was like, wow, that's great. At least I, it's not that. So maybe it's just something that'll pass. And uh, so uh, anyway, it just started getting worse and worse and uh, didn't know. Uh, exactly what to do. So I went back to the doctor and uh, he sent me for more blood work and it came back again that I had no rheumatoid arthritis whatsoever. I'm sure you've heard this story before from, I think, some of your other viewers too, where uh, they just weren't testing the right markers of my blood. So finally, um, this is a bit of a funny story. I was working actually before I started my own company in another media company. It was a business to business media company and it was very stressful, very stressful. And you know how much stress plays on your 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 arthritis and your uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, I had I was having a really stressful time. I had a team of uh, about twelve people, and we were going through a big change. And uh, all of a sudden, my finger just started swelling up, like my middle finger. It was just like as big as a sausage. And of course, you know, psoriatic arthritis. The, the layman's term is called uh, sausage joints. Anyway, so. I was like, this is really bad and I'm not feeling good. Right. And so I went to emergency and they, the emergency doctor said, Oh my goodness, this is, this is quite bad. You know, this could be like an infection in your finger and uh, it could be, they thought maybe it was like a cat scratch or, or something that was deeply infected in there. And so um, they said, uh, well, we're going to do surgery, open it up and see, you know, to drain it and everything and get rid of, you know, so they opened it up and immediately they closed it back up. And when I came to, they said, we know what your problem is. You have psoriatic arthritis. They could see the tendon was gray and um, that it wasn't like, it was just so inflamed and, and so uh, deformed, really. The doctor had a funny joke. He said, you, you, I know what exactly you have. You have the social disease. I'm like, social disease? Like, yeah, your middle finger, you can't. You can't close it. You're walking around with your your middle finger stiff all the time. <laughs> he, he was a great that's surgeon. A weird, that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a social disease. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So so then um, 
so then there I, I actually got my first exposure to a rheumatologist and uh, the rheumatologist immediately put me on naproxen um, and sulfasalazine and uh, it actually worked quite well it, it, it reduced it reduced the um, the inflammation I was let out of the hospital like a day or two later which was great and uh, I kept taking it for probably about six months to about a year I kept taking it but I knew that that wasn't the way I wanted to go I knew that was not the path for me so I slowly weaned myself off of it and then Clint I think it went into remission uh, I didn't have really anything happen and then of course one day I like I say in my blog my old friend came knocking at the door the pain started again and it just got worse and worse and I have a really into martial arts. I'm a black belt in Taekwondo and train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I was like, I was having a really hard time keeping up with my sports. And I, I, I went back to taking naproxen just over the counter. I'm naproxen. And I was up to like taking six pills a day. It was just, oh, it was just crazy. And I knew it was hurting me and my psoriasis is, was just crazy. And it, it really wasn't, looking good and i'd always been a health-oriented person or at least i thought and i'd always try to eat the healthiest foods and try to try to be the best that i could and um my daughter was home from university and she had turned vegan at university and she came home for the summer and and uh spent time with us and i'm like vegan what is this this is what are you doing with this vegan stuff i'm not sure about this like if you can see my deck, Clint, I've got two of the biggest barbecues known to man. And, uh, you know, we love cooking like steaks and, uh, you know, grass fed beef and you name it. And always trying to have like really high end dinners. I, I love cooking. I used to cook when I was uh, working in Chicago, but um, that's another story. So I'm like, well, OK. Um, I'm going to start trying to make her some meals. I, I first tried to break her of it, and she wasn't going to break. And uh, <laughs> so it's, a, I, it's yeah. almost the classic story, you know. Yeah. Girl, girl goes off to university and comes back vegan, and then, like, I'm vegan now. Now everyone yeah. must be vegan in the family, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's so stereotypical. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, I was like, there's no way. So, but I started to feel bad because when she would come over, I wasn't really making her anything special. And I always made her great you know food and she's like dad you didn't really so then i started to look at some recipes started making the food and uh really started to enjoy it and i have to say i wouldn't have been able to do any of this journey without my wife jacinta like she's just amazing and so supportive and um i'll talk more about that in a minute but she grasped onto it too and she started eating some of these meals and we started feeling better we, we really felt great and you know i did notice an improvement and um you know, my whole digestion and bowel movements, you name it, you know, my energy levels. And I started to lose weight, feel better. And, and things were really, really going great. But it still wasn't, I still couldn't get rid of like a lot, a lot of the pain. I mean, I would say I was probably 60% there, Clint. And I, my intuition was telling me, I believe in like, I believe that we all have our own intuition and that can tell us a lot about our own wellness. And we don't really tap into that a lot. And I knew there was something out there. I knew you were out there, Clint. And I wanted to, I wanted to find some kind of solution other than having to go on methotrexate. And my doctor was pushing me to go. He's like, you, you need to, if this doesn't get better, you're going to have to do something. And I, I was, I was pushing back and good thing. He was, uh, he was, flexible enough to allow me to sort of find my own way and so i was watching your video i i came across your video it was like 2 30 in the morning or something i couldn't sleep i was in pain and i found your video and you were talking about how you felt after eating cherries and, and got sick and that you didn't eat anything and after you did that you felt so much better and then the light bulb went off in my head and i was like wow that's it that's exactly how i feel when i don't eat and then I knew, I knew from there that this was a guy that was speaking to me and that I wanted to learn more about what you were doing. And so I, of course, 
uh, went to your site and then checked out your program, bought the program. And uh, like I said, my wife just sent us. She's so amazing. She just like was all in with me. She just went in and she made me the green uh, juice smoothies every morning. And we both, she, she ate the same diet as I did the whole time. And uh, very supportive. And uh, I couldn't believe it. I was in first time, uh, you know, in many, many years, 20 plus years, I was had no pain. And uh, I was getting, you know, moving the right direction. My CRP was so high. And then I think it was like 35 or even 55 at one point. And then it went down. And then it went down to like 15. And then Anyway, long story short, it's it's within the normal range. It's like four now. Now, I know you said that you want to get it down to zero, and that's my goal is to get it down to zero, and I'm working on that. Mm, wow. So, yeah, wow. <clears throat> I don't think we can get it down to zero, actually. We can get it below one. Zero, I don't actually know if you can get zero. I've never seen okay. one. With zero. one. I've never had zero. But anyway, that's a, that, that's a detail that distracts from the main wonderful story that you've just shared um and uh I, i'm not sure which question to ask next but first of all what about the rheumatologist what did they say after your numbers were dropping did the rheumatologist or 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 is the rheumatologist still suggesting methotrexate okay so i had two i, I had two rheumatologists one of which um i no longer needed because it basically went into remission and i, I lost track of of that rheumatologist and I had a new, my doctor left and I had to get a new doctor. So my new doctor, uh, well, just a story about that, that rheumatologist told me, um, actually said, do not go to any naturopathic doctors or follow any, any, uh, like health food diet. Cause it's not going to work for you. They actually said that to me when I, like my last time leaving, if you can believe that. So almost, almost as though like a, a final warning. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just very strange. And it, it really set in my mind, like, why would they even say that? And then my second rheumatologist, I only visited once. And she told me not to come back to her again unless I was ready to um, take her advice and go on the methotrexate. Um, so I don't have a rheumatologist saying I, I, I was basically a self-directed rheumatologist and uh, using my own, uh, like I said, intuitive wellness and intuition to sort of guide me. And of course, you're your advice has been so instrumental. So, just to clarify, then uh, for the for the naysayers, skeptics, or the people who say "yeah, but" to everything that we do, um, but you're waking up in the morning, your joints, the hands close nicely, your feet don't hurt on cold surfaces in the morning. Uh, you're walking around, you're able to lift heavy things, and you're basically moving and living a life as though. There is no autoimmune disease. Absolutely, I still I have some joint damage, um, but I I basically am living with no autoimmune disease. I I, I work out every day, and uh, you know I'm, I'm living the the good life. You know and I'm really feeling like amazing, and uh, so it, it it really also as you know helps your your thinking because without that the inflammation in your body, it also clears your mind. And I feel better than ever from a, from a mental state too, which has helped my business immensely. Well, it, it seems to make you lighter, doesn't it? I don't just mean physically lighter, but first of all, when we're pushing fat through our bloodstream, it requires more energy, which is the underlying principle of high blood pressure because you've got a pump and it has to move the blood through the body. Well, if there's more resistance, more friction due to the fat content in the blood, then you need a bigger pump. You need more pressure. And so you literally are lighter um, with a lower fat intake diet. And I think that there's also, uh, you know, just this, just this freedom of, 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 well, the inflammation itself, which adds a sort of a, a, a consumption of energy in the body is gone. Um, so, you know, yeah, you're lighter, you've got lower blood pressure. There's, it's just a, a, a nicer existence. Absolutely. And that was one of the things I was so surprised when uh, I, I checked out your plan was that it was the no oil. 
because to me, oil was always something, you know, oil, we always had oil, like oil was always, you know, olive oil, that's got to be healthy, you know, I mean, but then when you really think about it, like, we never had oil, like, when is it like oil is just like modern man's creation, right? And so the whole food plant based diet is definitely the way to go. If you're going to get the oil, eat the whole, the whole plant. And uh, yeah, so it, it it's really, really amazing. And I talked to some friends about it. They're still, they just can't understand no oil, right? That's it's a hard one. Look, and that oil, it's one of the been one of the most difficult chapters for my for me to write in my book, which I'm in the process of sort of sort of stringing together now. Oh um, awesome. Yeah, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. So That's people amazing. have been wanting this for like the last literally seven years. Uh, it is finally it is it's getting closer. So I'm in the next few weeks we'll be talking to a designer for the cover and stuff. So it's getting there. Um but but um it's a hard chapter to write about the oil. Well, it's called uh, cell membrane repair. It's all about how the fatty acids can, sh- can become constituents of the cell membrane. And the reason it's complicated is because there's so many subtleties involved. And it's a, it's a whole nother podcast, but there are so many subtleties involved. And as soon as I start on this, I won't be able yeah. to stop. Yeah, so no, we'll, we'll put that aside for the moment. But yes, the no oil thing is hard. And just for people who are still stuck on the no oil thing, a little thing, it, a little bit of olive oil, and I'm not saying it's a health food, but a little bit of olive oil that's not heated mm-hmm. is not going to be the end of the world. No. A little bit of unheated olive oil on a salad is not the end of the world. It's mostly omega-9, which doesn't go uh, and trigger this sort of arachidonic acid pathway in the body. Um, it is heavy 14 to 1, omega-6 to, uh, to omega-3, but the amount, the total amount is small compared to omega-9. And so, you know, if we're sort of splitting hairs here, a little bit of olive oil uh, may not be that detrimental. As soon as you heat any oil, it increases free radicals uh, potential tremendously. So that's a disaster. You don't want to heat any oil. Um, but you know, just to sort of close out the the olive oil, which is always the one that people debate about, um, uh, you're better off getting your your omega threes via uh, lots and lots of leafy greens, and it's in all you know whole whole not all whole foods, a lot of the whole foods that we're eating in small amounts. So big salads, lots of whole foods, and you'll get over that 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 minimum requirement each day, no problem. So. Anyway, you got me started on. Oh, that's great. Yeah. The salads. I remember watching you uh, on one of your videos, you were sharing what you were eating and you were eating uh, quinoa with miso and kale. And I was like, what? Like, because I had not eaten a lot of quinoa and I I really hadn't eaten any miso and I, I didn't eat a lot of kale. And I actually have sort of a funny story about the kale. It's like, when I started eating kale, I was getting very sick. It just showed you how bad my gut microbiome was. It was bad because I got very sick, um, you know, like sick, like just from, yeah, both ways. Yeah, you name it at the same time. And But now I eat kale every day. And I eat, I eat your, your quinoa, miso, and kale for lunch just about every day. Well, I'll tell you a funny story that 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 sort of parallels that. When I first started eating quinoa, it was when I um, was traveling in Peru, which is sort of the, it's re- really regular and common in Peru. And I went uh, on a holiday with Melissa, and she's like, "Oh, you'll love quinoa; it's so good for you." And I'm like, "Couldn't even say it, you know, like quinoa, <laughs> quinoa." <laughs> Right, and yeah. and let alone spell it, and then I'm eating it, and like you, I just seemed to couldn't digest it, right? Because my, as you say, like my bacteria that in my colon were off the <laughs> left, and the, and, the, and the the microbes I need for quinoa is off to the right, yeah. and they did, and I'm on this like relationship sort of building most crucial <laughs> kind of. <laughs> 16 day sort of you know could she be my future wife oh, wow. right? oh. and and i'm and i'm getting up in the middle of the night running out of the room you know like it was it was nasty because i just wow. couldn't yeah so yeah, i know yeah we can't blame the food it's 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 the it's it's the it's the machinery that's trying to digest that food yeah well. yeah. yeah totally yeah so yeah kale kale is my uh 
is my my thing now i, I eat so much <laughs> kale I, I love it like we must go through two or three heads of kale we grow kale in our in our um our little garden which is now a new addition so yeah kale is just so great for you that's fantastic. Uh, now, I want to ask, uh, I've got a bunch of questions uh, here for you. Um, yeah. The, the plant-based website that you create, that one of your four sort of pillars that, of your business, is, yeah. has that has that come about since you've changed your lifestyle or was that always in place? No, that's come about since I changed my lifestyle, actually. So um, I actually... When I was working at the B2B business, it was so stressful. And I was talking about the surgery in my hand and not knowing. So I left that business to start up this wellness business because I knew that that was the path I wanted to go on. Um, I worked as a personal trainer for a couple of years and I love helping people. Uh, it's really what I enjoy most. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, so if that answers your question. Yeah. So you thought, yeah. look, I, it, I'm passionate about this. I'm a black belt martial artist. I just learned from you, you do personal training. So you've always been physically active. And then you found out that the missing link was just to eliminate some of the, the animal foods and oils from your diet. And then you've realized now, now I'm living the way that my body's, you know, most optimized for. Um, and so you've added the plant-based website. Okay. That's fantastic. Is, is it something that the that, that that our audience might be interested in or oh absolutely yeah, yeah they've got a lot of cool recipes a lot of cool yeah. recipes on there um yeah. it's healthfulgourmet.com and uh they're like foods that i eat um just about every day and a lot of them are simple a lot of them are a bit more complex and uh there's everything on there um from like mexican food to asian food to uh curries and um, of course, it's a little bit more evolved than, you know, when you first start on the Patterson yeah. program of just the juice. Yeah. Uh, I basically have introduced all the foods and I know what foods I can eat mm. uh, and one, what foods I cannot eat. One point I wanted to mention, one thing I found that was really helping me, Clint, and this might, you probably already know this, but it's also incorporating some of the intermittent fasting. So I've been using that as well. Uh, so basically... Uh, don't eat for like 16 hours every day and then only eat during that eight hour window. And I try to like even crunch that down a bit more, less than eight if I can. But that has been really, really helpful, I find as well. Especially if you do have a flare up, as you know, like you've said before, all you have to do is just stop eating and then it slowly cl clears itself up over time. So, and just incorporating that has seemed to help. And plus, I've seen some uh, studies that a uh, doctor, I don't know. The neuroscientist Andrew Huberman has brought yeah. forth about um, the intermittent fasting and how it helps longevity and helps for fitness and weight loss and everything. So that's something that uh, I have found very beneficial as well. Yeah. So something I've learned about not eating um, recently is that originally I thought that when I had like my purging, as you said earlier, the cherry incident. I thought that the only explanation to that was that particles uh, in my digestive tract, i.e. colon, small intestine, were translocating into my bloodstream. And in the absence of food, there was therefore no food particles to enter my bloodstream, which can be immunoreactive to the proteins. And that was the only explanation as to why, when I didn't eat, I felt well. And therefore... It is 100% leaky gut, and therefore it's like undebatable. That was my understanding. I've since seen studies that, are, as I said, as a result of working on my book, and the studies show that because the immune system is such a, a heavy drain on your resources, and estimates are that 10% of your metabolic energy goes into fueling your immune system when you are inflamed. So every 10 bites, one of them gets totally consumed to keep you inflamed. It's like a lot of energy, which is why we're always tired and we can never seem to get on, on top of things with the, with the fatigue when <laughs> we're inflamed. Now, this also even turns out to be the case when we have low-grade inflammation and people with rheumatoid have been studied who are in remission or low C-reactive protein uh, you know, low vector scores and so on um, have been shown to also uh, have this um, uh, energy consumption and also the, um, the the fatigue reporting. So 
what I have since understood is that there is another factor going on when we don't eat, and that is that the immune, the inflammation production uh, actually gets deprioritized uh, behind survival, and the body's energy resources go towards energy consumption, and that the, for want of a better phrase, the luxury of fighting infections or inflammation or cr and creating inflammation and fighting bacteria, you know, perceived bacteria in the joints and all this must actually take a backseat to survival. And so the immune system simply stops the, the, the inflammation uh, activity. And so it's not just the translocation of the particles creating the immune system. It's that the immune system just says, uh, 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 no more inflammation. I'm, go I'm in a survival state. And, and that's something that I'm now very certain of. I've had multiple studies. To wow. Confirm, and I that's find fascinating. That because it's new. It's so yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. That's very interesting. Yeah. It's like your body's like, oh, we're at DEF CON, you know, two now. Let's stop, let's stop the uh inflammation. We have to, we have we need food and yeah. and survival. Yeah. So exactly. that makes sense. Because if I'm gonna undertake a, a heavy, a heavy activity, which is to uh, uh basically create neutrophils, right? Create white blood cells and and to build these to go and fight infection. That's using up energy, and that could be in three, four days' time if I haven't been fed something that means I die earlier, right? And I need that. Yeah. I need that energy. So I didn't realize that the immune system is such a heavy drain on the body's resource, and inflammation in particular, the creation of these anti-inflammatory molecules and so on. Oh yeah, they've all got to be built from something. That yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot, lot of work. work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know I had arthritis, which is like the inflammation in your eye. Mm -hmm. And like you get the white blood cells in your eyes. Just you got so many white blood cells running through your body. You can't even mm -hmm. see, you know? And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, that makes total sense. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a mm -hmm. that's a huge breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. I was fascinated by that. And um, it was brought to my attention by a medical researcher that I asked to investigate this. And they're like, wow, this is fascinating. Look at this. And they didn't know either. So it's not something I think that's that's really that well well known but yeah. the iritis does has the iritis gone as well oh yeah that's that's gone that that one really scared me <laughs> that one really scared me when you start to lose your sight then you're like okay this is hold on here you know this is this is not good so yeah now i write because there's a few different sort of uh levels of this isn't there there is simply sort of the dry eye and the sort of lack of tear duct uh, activity creating uh, and also sort of and then you've got um you know associated things like that like blastphytis and so on but then it then it increases to iritis and now what was the optometrist or ophthalmologist saying about this situation well of course their approach is always just like hit it with as many drugs as you can right away um and they they also um give you these drops that sort of release your eye so that your iris doesn't even function. That just sort of releases it, like takes off the pressure on it. And so you can't really see out of the eye that's, in, that's affected. And uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, you're hitting drops all the time and then you're putting um, gel in your eye and uh, or, uh, it's, it's, it's quite, quite yeah. not, not a fun thing. I don't no. recommend it for anyone. Yeah. And uh you know the 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 few problems I had uh, with eyes, um, uh, thankfully very very short term. Um, you just feel really uncomfortable with putting stuff on your eyes. It's just so it's like so against nature, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's it's just mm. it's not it's not a good feeling at all, mm. and it, it constantly is on your mind too. Um, yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, yes, because yeah. you're always feeling it. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about something a little bit more. Okay. Better. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, your martial arts, black belt, physical, personal training. I want this to, my, my observation as listening to you talk is that this part of your life postponed and prevented much more severe and aggressive development of your condition uh, that otherwise would have played out. Um, you know, you've, you've got rheumatoid arthritis in your foot and then you say, you know, you went on sulfasalazine and some naproxen for nine months and then it's gone and it went into remission. That never happens unless you're physically really fit, right? So, so do you agree as well that that part of your life basically gave you a lot 
more lev- or, or a lot more sort of buffer. Oh, absolutely, Clint. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, fitness and health has always been my passion since I was really thirteen. I I wanted to to play football and got introduced to working out. And I actually liked working out more than I liked the football team. So I quit the football team and and just focused on working out. And uh, it was something I always enjoyed. And uh, fitness and health is something that's uh, been my passion. Um, Certainly without it, I don't think I would be as far ahead as I am now. And you're right, I was able to get through a lot of things that probably wouldn't normally be able to uh, if it wasn't for my my health and fitness. Um, Yeah. Yeah, and for people who aren't doing any exercise, you have the greatest opportunity ever sitting right there in front of you that the the movement of the body just offers so many benefits, <laughs> anti-inflammatory, strength, confidence, self-esteem, uh, sleep, microbiome improvements, uh, muscle development, loading of the joints, uh, supporting through uh, muscle tissue, uh, anti-inflammatory effects uh, through reduction of tendonitis. I mean, it's just so much that you can see, uh, you know, as we're talking to Max here, um, he's had this onset of psoriatic arthritis slash rheumatoid arthritis, and then he's so physically fit that that's been able to be postponed in spite of uh, potentially some of the wrong fuels coming into the body. So I wanted to make that point. What is your daughter saying now? about your changes oh well it's really brought us so much closer like really uh, i think for a daughter to have her father like listen to her yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's changing the you know i quit coffee uh, you know to quit meat you know um yeah so it, it's really brought us closer and we really enjoy our cooking together and spending time together talking about food and you know being vegan i don't know what it is but you're constantly thinking about food like our our question is always like what's the meal for tomorrow night and we actually plan out our meals for the week and uh, a lot of times we're just eating the same thing it's mexican monday and then our plant-based burgers and uh but uh yeah it's it's really been my daughter madison she's amazing and she's uh she's working in public health and uh yeah she's 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 very special kid does she have any interest in working in the family business you know, I think she might eventually, but she's doing pretty well. She's making uh, very good money doing what she's doing and really enjoying it. She's working for uh, a company that uh, certifies like environmental practices. So she's helping the environment. So, yeah, so it's really cool what she's doing and she's really enjoying the path that she's on. Um, you know, they go hand in hand, don't they? Uh, when you eat light, you kind of think about, a light planet and think about these things more has that also entered your sort of day-to-day yeah it's very interesting yeah because you as you probably know when you when you go vegan you you take a lot of heat from other family members and people around you that are not vegan you all, all of a sudden get this stigma too of being difficult and annoying at the restaurant for ordering you name it and uh yeah so it's it's been uh it's been a funny uh a funny time for sure for that but uh like you know i think just focusing on um health like the health reasons of going vegan was my was my start and then and then it became i started to learn more about it and started watching some videos and um have you ever seen earthling ed i have seen some of his stuff on youtube yeah i've never seen yeah. him speak live no yeah very interesting that like how he talks about going vegan it has nothing to do with health which to me is the, mm. the the reason one of the most important reasons but it's all about uh and animal uh humaneness and uh which resonates with me as well um, i studied actually pre-veterinary science in university i was going to become a veterinarian but i realized i love animals too much that i couldn't so i went on to uh do it in another field but uh yeah it uh it definitely opens your eyes also just to the planet i really i didn't realize that uh, you know the emissions and uh everything that's causing with global warming a lot of that is coming from our animal industries and on this planet and you know we really don't need to have that so you know, we all can just eat more plants and that's one of the things that we're trying to do is just help people realize just eat more plants you know 
uh, make the steps towards, uh, you know, healthier eating and uh, whole foods, plant-based, great taste. What, um, what would you say, if I could throw you in, under the spotlight here, maybe three yeah. or four top, top essential things you must do if you, uh, you know, looking to reduce inflammation, let's say, right? So this can be dietary related. Um, you might have some sub sub bullet points under that, or there could be some other things like having someone who is so supportive as as you had with your wife. But just for anything that comes to mind, do this, do this, do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like one of them would be the intermittent fasting, like um, and, and and giving your body that break and, and giving it time to digest and getting your uh, digestive cycle on a regular. Um, rhythm if you will uh so i think that's very important uh obviously uh eliminating the foods that are causing that inflammation you know like with the milk and, and like cheese you know people just can't give up cheese um and the, the heavy oil and i'm not saying vegan foods are all healthy either there's so many processed vegan foods that are just awful and they can cause just as much inflammation if not more than uh, some of the meat foods. So it's basically keeping away from a lot of the processed foods. My wife says, if it has a barcode on it, we're not buying it. So that's one of her uh, things. So we really try to make everything from scratch. And uh, so, so that's very important. And then of course, exercise is so important because it uh, you know, gets your blood flow. Uh, I think it helps reduce the inflammation in your body, helps clear your mind. Um, and, and, and just keeps you motivated. You know, one of the other things interesting about eating meat is that when those animals are killed, they're in a state of fear, right? So all of those chemicals that cause fear and anxiety are in their bodies, in their systems, in their in their tissues when they're when they're killed. And then as consumers, people go and eat that and then they get ingest that. So I mean those those fear chemicals, cortisol. Uh, you name it, or in the in the meat, and then that causes a lot of anxiety. Like we have an anxiety epidemic taking place now uh, in our society, and a lot of that I think is caused by foods. So, yeah, so I would definitely say uh, intermittent fasting, watching what you eat, and exercise are the top three for sure. Now that you've you've said you've lost some body weight, and I can't see below your shoulders, but um, it, from from taking a guess, you're probably now at a uh, at a at a a really nice you know um, um, body mass index or whatever they say, um, and so how have you felt in terms of then physical activity in terms of weightlifting, uh, martial arts, uh, and so on? And has there been uh, a recovery period where perhaps you? were not as strong or not as flexible uh, or has it improved those areas? Well, it's definitely improved for sure with the, the plant-based eating. Like I find, um, cause I, like I said, I started working out like with weights when I was 13 and I used to compete in some bodybuilding contests, nothing major uh, in university. I always enjoyed that. And <clears throat> I always had a pretty good physique, but Wow, with the plant-based eating, like it's really, it's like my body just is wants to be in great shape all the time. It's it and it gives me these signs to, you know, make sure you don't fall off the wagon here. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna get some pain or you know, something that's gonna kick you in the butt. But uh yeah, it's certainly helped Clint. And I don't know if you've ever seen the Game Changers movie, uh, but well, there you go. I mean, like some of the the top athletes in the world are, are plant-based and uh I, I wholeheartedly agree. Like I remember in martial arts, there were some times where I couldn't compete because my stomach was upset or I was too tired or feeling lethargic or the way I used to eat, I'd, I'd be so tired afterwards. I couldn't do anything. I wouldn't want to, sometimes I'd skip class or something. Um, so yeah, the plant-based living is just like sort of having the chains lifted off you and, and you're just free to go. Are you able to now eat a quite a diverse amount of plant-based foods such as potatoes and you're able to eat lentils, beans, rice, uh, corn? Is it pretty much unlimited? Yeah, I can pretty much eat everything. Like the, the things that I really have found that are the triggers for me are anything that's sweet um, and especially late at night. That's a no-no. If I had, let's say, two bananas like before I go to bed, 
I'll wake up with inflammation. Or uh, one of the foods I tried uh, when I was, go- was coming back was an orange, and I immediately had the reaction. It's like uh, my wife calls calls me the canary in the coal mine. It's almost I can feel it almost like within an hour or two if I eat something that's bad that's that's affecting me. So it's it's pretty it's pretty good. Like uh, it's 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 great. It's a gift really to have this. You know, keeping me on track. I mean. To, to staying healthy my body's telling me you know sure it's causing pain and all these other things but you know i think in the long run it's been so much better for me it's fascinating isn't it and we can say that and we do believe that once we've gotten over that massive hump and until we get over that massive inflammation hump and we get things settled down it's it's just ah, it, it is it's as low as it can be um but uh, with this with these oranges and bananas just for example uh, if you eat them, say around midday, um, how did, are you then able to tolerate them? Yeah, I'm I'm able to tolerate them if I have it midday. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, so like I'll have a smoothie like with blueberries and uh, bananas, and um, you know, and it's great. I'm fine, no problems. But if if I have anything sweet late at night, uh, it it definitely does not work for me. And I've been I know that you talked about in one of your videos about trying to have a bowel movement like before you go to bed and that's that's something that's been a goal for me as well is to, to have that complete you know clean out before you go to bed if, if you can although i am yeah i am pretty regular for sure uh anyway so it's been great yeah yeah interesting so i guess what the you know i love trying to think well, what what does that mean you know with the citrus and the bananas it could just be that you have more of an accentuated version of the typical human digestive power, which peaks at midday and then slowly tails off until we get to nighttime and then, and then ramps back up again in the morning where midday is the, the middle of the bell curve. And perhaps like in your case, you know, that's literally really, really kind of the case and that your yeah. digestion late at night it's shut down. It's working on, <laughs> you know, it doesn't want yeah. to. So true. Yeah. It's closed for business. And, yeah. it, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's like no, no late night pizzas for you, my friend, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's gosh. okay. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. It's, it's, that's fine. Yeah. Well, again, it, yeah. If we bring it right back to, you know, really sort of um, basic, you know, human evolution where before we would have had, um, you know, ability to light our evenings. Once it became dark, it was dark, right? And then we wouldn't have been able to find food. We wouldn't have been able to grind or prepare or even know where the banana was to peel it. Okay. Yeah. So, so if it's that dark at say six o'clock at night, um, and it's not going to be light again until six in the morning, then there's no eating going on. Never, never, right? So you got to eat big through those, you know, twelve hours. And then that's it. You know, you got to fast until morning because uh, that's how it is. So, I mean, it all it is is basically realigning us into the way that we're meant to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that it's interesting you make that point because I find like my peak energy levels around two p.m. my time, and uh, that's like when I like to work out sometimes. And so it must be my my body's energy is is flowing, like my my engine is burning, and that's the time I should be eating like fruit and anything sweet for sure. Mm. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Well, Max, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you'd like to say? I just want to say again, Clint, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And like, you know, I, I really, really appreciate it. Like you're a fabulous person. And uh, without you, I wouldn't have been able to get this far. So I'm very grateful. So thanks again, Clint. Oh, thanks, Max. And please pass on my uh, thanks in turn to your daughter who, uh, you know, she did the hard work. She was in close. <laughs> she was the, the right, you know, right there and telling you, you, you know, you can do this and, and, and planted that seed for you. So you've had, um, you've had some, uh, some, some people in your life, your daughter and your wife who've been so helpful for you. So you're very, very oh, happy. Yeah. I'm very grateful for sure. Yeah. I'm blessed. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Max. We'll leave it there. And I hope that everyone has enjoyed listening or watching this episode with Max. If you like this episode, please go over to iTunes and give us a five-star review so more people can learn about this podcast. Max, thanks very much. Thank you so much, Clint.